Now, once you understand the type of request from this user endpoint, let's take a look at how you can create a controller for all these HTTP requests. So let's suppose that you make a GET request, we return a different controller. On the POST request, we return the POST controller and so on. So inside this database, I'm going to create a new file controller and create all the controllers inside that file. But before that, let me just open the con.js file. And instead of having this Mongo URI inside this file, for the security reason, I'm going to grab this URL and then specify that inside a .env file. So inside this project right here, I'm going to create a new file and name this file .env.development. And inside this file, I'm going to grab this Mongo URI, this variable, and specify that here. And I'm going to specify equal to sign. And in the double quote, I'm going to specify this URI. So I'm going to grab this and specify that inside this file right here. Now, let me save these changes. Close this file and back to the connection. Get rid of this first constant variable. And instead of this Mongo URI, now here you have to say process dot env dot the variable name which is mongo uri that's it this is going to return the mongo uri to this connection close this connection file and back to the users right here i'm going to create a new controller for this get request so once you put your connection string inside your dot env file back to the database folder and here i'm going to create a new file and name this file controller dot js that's upon you. You can create all the controllers inside this index.js file as well. So inside this controller right here, I'm going to first add a command controller. And right down here, I'm going to first say export a sync function. And I'm going to name this function get users. Or you can specify a name to this function get employee. Now this function is going to return a response to this endpoint. So what we need to do is we need to pass both these parameters to this controller right here request and response back to the index.js at the top right up here i'm going to say import in the object i'm going to say get user from the database controller file and copy this get user and specify that right here something like this and don't forget to pass request and response parameter now let me get rid of this statement save this file back to the controller inside of this get user i'm going to say try and catch so i'm going to call here try and catch syntax and inside the catch i'm going to say response dot status which is going to be 404 dot json and inside the json i'm going to return error and then i'm going to specify the error error while fetching data or you can specify here employee data and inside this get user i'm simply going to say response dot status 200 which is the OK status and then I'm going to say dot JSON and inside an object we pass user and just for now I'm going to say here get request now let me save the changes and open the postman API testing tool and just out of that I'm going to select the get method and I'm going to make a request to localhost 3000 API users when I click on the send button you can see I'm going to get a response user get request now what I want instead of getting this response I want to get the data from the MongoDB database so to get that, you need to create a MongoDB schema. So you need to first specify structure to your MongoDB database. So what we are going to do is inside a project, I'm going to create a new folder, name this folder model and press enter. And inside this model folder, I'm going to create a new file and specify name to it user.js. And here I'm going to create the MongoDB schema. So what we need to do is inside this file, we need to specify the structure of the document. You have to first import few objects here from mongoose library so we need to say here mongoose and from mongoose you need to import schema the schema class then you need to import models and then you need to import model we imported models and model from this mongoose don't try to confuse with these variables just for that here i'm going to say constant user schema is equal to and then we need to create a new object or you can say a new instance of a schema class and inside this you need to specify the structure to the document so inside an object we specify first name inside this name we specify the user full name so we pass the type of it which is string the type of data we are storing inside this name property is string then i'm going to say avatar 
inside this avatar i'm also going to ins insert a type of string data then i'm going to specify here email which is a type of string then i'm going to specify salary which is a type of number then i'm going to add here date date is a type of string and status and this is also a type of string so this is a simple structure of my mongodb document now just like that with this structure you have to create a new model in mongodb to create that you need to say model variable and then inside the parenthesis you need to specify the name for this model i'm going to specify name user and then you need to specify structure as a second argument so we pass here user schema here this one so this statement is going to create a new model inside a mongodb now what if you already have the existing model in the mongodb database in that case you can specify here models this variable dot user your model name if we have this user model inside a mongodb database then return that or create a new model so we pass here or just for that we need to store this data inside a variable so i'm going to say constant user is equal to and then right here i'm going to say export default user or you can specify here users something like this let me save this file close this user model and inside this controller right here you need to import that so here i'm going to say import user users from single quote double dot forward slash and then specify the model folder and then specify the user dot js file and using this users you can access the mongodb database so right inside this try here i'm going to say constant users is equal to users this mongodb schema and then i'm going to say dot find now this find method is going to find all the document from this user document so here inside this you need to pass empty object so this is going to return all the documents as a response and now we need to specify here await so we'll have all the data asynchronous just for that here i'm going to say if if i don't have the users data this users data inside this variable then i'm going to return a response dot status which is 404 dot json inside this json i'm going to return error and then i'm going to specify here error data not found and after that if we have data inside these users i'm going to execute this user dot status 200 and instead of this object i'm going to just specify here users this variable save this file open the postman api testing tool and click on the send button now when i make a request you can see i'm going to get an array as a response this is because inside my mongodb database i don't have any record that is why it's going to return the empty array next we need to add a new record inside the mongodb database and get that using this get users so let's see how to do it 